beat you up. I'll beat you up. I'll beat you up. I'll beat you up. Such a heavy shot. Such a heavy shot. You think you'll ever break my heart? Yeah. Beat up me. Beat up me. Beat up me.
Hi everybody, I'm okay, thank God. I just wanted to say, nobody should have to go through what I just went through just now. What in the entire, that was the most traumatizing experience I've ever had in my life. Police screaming, guns drawn, people on the ground, praying, crying. Like, our luck. We were so lucky that the station we were at was an NYPD joint station with the MTA. Because imagine if there were no law enforcement around. And then WABC is saying that it was someone who was shot in the head. I'm not too sure if it was on the platform at Hoyt Shermerhorn or on the actual train not my car but on the train somewhere
So we're, good. we're doing that meeting. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Have a good one, guys. Okay, okay please. Me. All right, sir. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Okay. Sir, tell me, uh, where were you coming from when you heard about a shooting in the subway? Um, it's coming from Court Square. No need to uh, like, on my way down. I heard the announcement saying something happened in Hoyt, Shermhorn Street. And where are you trying to head to York? Do you live in this part of Brooklyn? No, I was just gonna I was just gonna head to a place to get dinner around here. I heard right. there was a good and you live in Brooklyn? I don't live in Brooklyn, I live in Manhattan. Manhattan. And how often do you ride the subways a lot? I oft, I ride very often from like I ride around like twenty third to around twenty third street. Okay. So I do ride it a lot. So what do you think is going to happen you know, after this? Are you going to take the subway a lot less now or what? I mean, there's not really other mode of transportation besides right, the subway right. that I can take. It's the most reliable one, but, All you right. know. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. What exactly happened and uh, what, where you were on the train? Um, I was on the Brooklyn. The Queensbound platform heading home, and after I saw an A train pulling up to the station going towards Inwood, um, after the doors opened, there was people flooding out the train trying to get off the station, and after there was just screaming and people just panicking trying to. Where are you trying to head home? Trying to from school? I was coming from school going home. Right. Yeah. And how was it going through that traumatic experience? It was it was kind of it was kind of terrifying. I was I was scared. I didn't know what was gonna happen. Are you gonna make you reconsider taking the subway to school or anywhere? Um, not really. I mean, I seen I heard stuff about it happen before. This is like this is my first time of like experiencing it in person. I lived in New York since since my since I was born, and I'm it, it's happened this happens a lot, but is the subway system is unstable. But, it's it gets it's yeah. quicker than taking a bus to school. The bus will take me about an hour, and I can't really. Uh, are you gonna get picked up or are you gonna get home? Um, right now I'm waiting for. Uh, I'm waiting for just. Uh, I might go to the another subway station, but I'm just. But currently, I usually way of getting home is from the H train. Anything else you wanna say, sir? Cool. Can you explain your name? Um. Nagel Maldonado, N A T G E L M A L D O N A D O. Alright, thank you. So I guess my music was just loud and it was happening. But I started I started getting aware of what was going on after everything started after the train started getting flown out. Describe what you saw. Um I saw people I saw people like rushing off the train, people were getting people were falling over. Um, there were people getting injured, people were getting their arms, legs stuck on. Um, there was like a, like, to say it was like a stampede. People were just trying to get off the train from the person who was on. So did you see the man that had the gun? Was anyone screaming? Yeah, they was all yelling from, from getting off the train. They were just yelling and screaming. Just loud. So you haven't had your headphones in, you didn't hear any gunshots, you just see people like as a stampede as you say, what did you think was going on? I thought, I thought that, because after people, after I heard the screaming, there was, there was police and I, I couldn't see because of the, the pillars and the stations on the side. It was, they, it looked like they had their guns in hand, so it was just, I thought to my head, I was like, does someone that has a gun? 
that's the first thing I thought of. Like, those someone armed that there's police with guns in their hands. Police with their own guns in their hands trying to look for somebody. Were you scared at any point? Yeah. As soon as I found out about it, I was scared. Can you spell your name again? Sorry. Nigel Maldonado M. Nigel Maldonado N A T G E L M A L D O N A D. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm just going to take a still. Yep, Gerber is here yet again. Thank you so much. It's pretty cold. All right, tell me uh, what exactly is your thoughts on this uh, shooting incident that took place in the subway here? It's tragic. This could be the fourth person dead in the subway system this year alone. So we're absolutely fed up with this. It's, it's gone to a breaking point. It got to a breaking point ages ago, and the MTA and the city and the state just keep downplaying our, our cries for help, our pleas for s some solution and proactive leadership, and we've seen nothing like that. And this is also a sign that Governor Hochul's plan is clearly not working because the National Guard is clearly being used in the wrong way. It's just a waste of resources to put them doing bag checks outside of the station entrances, and then you don't even see them past six o'clock. And then, thank goodness that this station had a police district. We're not gonna see that everywhere a shooting happens. So, fortunately, the police were actually able to take care of it. They were able to get this guy into surgery. We hope we're, he's gonna actually make it, but there's no guarantee. But I did wanna make one thing clear. At this press conference, it was mentioned that the person, the suspect, had both a gun and a knife. And that was mentioned once, and then all of a sudden, everyone's focusing on the guns. Yes, that is a serious issue, and we have to get rid of them in our city. That is a serious issue, and it's only part of the much larger problem that we're also not seeing proactive leadership with the National Guard. We've been pleading for them to actually get onto the platforms and the trains 
actually patrolling them and helping people in need, and we've not been seeing that. Okay. So, can I get the, from Charlton now? Yeah, go right ahead. So, what happened here today is a tragic, uh, tragic tragedy, and here we go again. It's the same cycle over and over again. You know, another man was shot. He might die. He's in surgery right now. So transit employees, passengers all over the city are fed up. And we had a big rally and protest outside Governor Kathy Hogel's uh, office Charlton, on Friday. So at this point, you know what I'm saying to transit workers and passengers? Let's go on strike. Let's shut this city down and let the elected officials feel the consequences of a shutdown city. Because we're fed up. We're fed up of the violence on the subway. All lives don't matter to the governor, the mayor, and these are damn elected officials. Okay, thank you. Uh, Charlton, can you wrap it up? Just one sentence wrap up. One, one sentence wrap up. This is a, a state of emergency right now in our subway system. We need leadership from our elected officials. All right, thanks, Charlton. <laughs> This afternoon, this afternoon at about 4.45 p.m., uh, I want to bring you on a northbound A train. Uh, we had a 32-year-old male uh, enter the uh, train, uh, we believe at the Notion Day Avenue station. Uh, this 32-year-old uh, gets onto the train, the doors close, and the train starts moving. Uh, as the train starts moving, He's approached by a 36-year-old male who was already on the train. Uh, this 36-year-old male um, was described by multiple witnesses as being aggressive and provocative towards the 32-year-old that just got on. Words were exchanged between the two, uh, and during the words it became physical, uh, and also the 36-year-old uh, at one point uh, displayed either a knife or a razor blade toward the 32-year-old. The 36-year-old put that sharp object down. Words were still exchanged. It became physical again. And at some point, uh, the 36-year-old uh, removed a firearm from his jacket. Uh, he then took that firearm, uh, started walking toward uh, the 32-year-old uh, who was on the train, uh, yelling at him, uh, walking toward him in a menacing way. Uh, and it became physical again between the two. During this physical confrontation, uh, that gun, we believe, was removed from the 36-year-old by the 32-year-old, and the 32-year-old fired uh, multiple shots striking the 36-year-old. Um, as this was occurring, the train uh, pulled into the Hoyt Skirmhorn Station, which is right behind me, uh, and I, it's very important that it be known there were multiple police officers in this station uh, just feet away from when this train pulled in that actually heard the shots and were on scene within seconds providing uh, medical assistance, uh, requesting an ambulance, and gathering witnesses. Our 36-year-old was removed to a local hospital. He's currently in surgery in critical condition and the 32-year-old is currently with detectives.